Hi, Bob from PineGrow here with another tutorial. Keeping common page elements like navigation menus and footers organized and up to date with changes in a multi page HTML project can be a challenge. Luckily, the PineGrow web editor provides a solution in the form of components. In this tutorial, I'll introduce them and outline some reasons you would want to use components in your next project. Let's get started. For this tutorial, I've already opened a Bootstrap 4 project and added both a fairly complex navbar and footer from bbbootstrap.com. You can download this and follow along from the link in the readings or in the video description. Each of the three top menu items are drop downs with multiple links, each with an icon. We can see this if we just turn on clicking and then select each one. The top menu items receive a class of active that adds styling when we navigate to that specific page. Currently, we're on the base index.html page that we are using for the home page, so the home link is styled red. If we examine the tree panel for this code, we can see how extensive it is. We can only see a small portion of the header code without scrolling. Looking through the code in an external editor, we can see that it is about 160 lines long. While the footer isn't as complex, it's still about 100 lines long. Now, we could copy and paste the code from this index.html page to each of our subpages, like products, resources, and clients. However, this is tedious and error prone. Alternatively, we could select either element in the tree or on the page, right click for a context menu, and then select add as HTML snippet. That snippet would be added to our library panel and then can be dragged to each of the subsequent pages. However, PineGrow provides a third powerful way to add reusable and very importantly, selectively editable and updatable code to our pages, components. To make our new menu into a component, Start by selecting it in the page view or on the tree panel. Here, I've selected the topmost container that holds the navbar component. Next, open the actions panel. Click on define component. A new section will appear at the top of the actions panel. Add a descriptive ID into the top box that must be unique. The best practice is to add a prefix that is unique to the project. In this case, since it's a components tutorial, I'll use CT. So CT dot navigation. Next, we can add a display name. This is the name that will show up in our library panel. In this case, I'll use BB bootstrap navigation. Optionally, you can add a description. This description helps you keep track of your components if you load them into other projects, for example. Also note these three other checkboxes, update instances, map URLs, and use photo only for preview. I'll touch on these briefly further into the tutorial. The other thing you can do at this point is optionally add a section name for where the component will be displayed within your library. To do this, keep the menu selected and then click on the section action. That'll bring up a new settings window. Then from within this, you can add a name for what that section should be. In this case, since I'm also going to add my footer, I'll give it a name of headers and footers. You can add multiple components to the same section simply by clicking on that section action, win action item and then putting in the exact same name. Now, in order to begin using our new component and make it show up in the library panel, we need to refresh the project by clicking on the orange arrows in the top bar next to the components menu. Right up here. This can also be accomplished by clicking either control plus U or command plus U, depending on your operating systems. Now, if we look at our library panel, we can see that our new navigation menu has uh, been added into the headers and footers section. Now let's go ahead and add the footer to our components. 
I'm going to close this. And then I am going to select the footer. And then from the actions panel, I'm going to select define comp to define that component. Again, we're going to give it a unique prefix in this case, CT. And this time we'll identify it as a footer. And again, we're going to give a display name and then add it to the same section as our other component. And you can see that uh, once we begin to type it, that Pine Grow gives us an autofill. Once again, we need to click the orange arrows to update our components. And now you can see we have both of our uh, new components added to the headers and footer section, the navigation and the footer. Okay, now that we have both added, let's put together the rest of our project pages. Based on the navigation, there should be three additional pages, products, resources, and clients. We create these quick pages by navigating to the project panel and clicking on the caret next to the project name. From there, we click on add new page. In this case, we're just going to select the index.html template for each of them. Adding our navigation footer to each page is now simple. Just open the library panel and drag each of our components to the appropriate places on the screen. Simple and relatively quick. Okay, I can hear you saying, this is a lot of work for something I could do with a cut and paste. What are the advantages? Well, first, components throughout a whole project can be updated in one place. Second, components are locked from accidental editing, preserving the look of our design. Third, components can be loaded and used in multiple projects. Let's briefly look at each of these advantages. The first advantage will let us make sure that all the pages in our project remain synchronized. For example, if a client decides that they prefer customers instead of clients, we don't have to sort through multiple pages to make changes. If we look at the project page, we can easily see which pages have components. The index HTML page is where our component was first defined. It has a blue puzzle piece icon next to its name. Each of the other three pages in the project get white puzzle piece icons, indicating that they are utilizing components. So we could just click on the index.html page and then find the original component. However, PineGrow provides a much simpler way. From the library panel, you can right click on the component and then select go to definition. PineGrow will then switch to the page with the original definition and actually select it for us. Once we open the component defining page, we simply edit the component, in this case swapping customers for clients Once that is done, we need to click on the orange arrows next to the components menu item to update all the instances of the component within our project. Along the same lines of keeping everything in sync throughout multiple project pages, the map URLs checkbox pointed out earlier in the component definition settings will make sure that even if the page we add to our component is in a different directory, that our original link to the URL will point to the correct file. Checking one of the pages, we can see that the updates 
actually took place and propagated throughout all our pages. If we had elected to either cut and paste or use HTML snippets to accomplish this, it would have taken a significant amount more of work. If you were to try and change a footer item on the products HTML page, for example, you're going to get an error. This tells us that this element can't be changed because it's already part of a component that doesn't allow for editing. So at first, this might seem like a liability, but allows us to make sure that if we have a complex design, we don't accidentally make a change that alters the layout. No worries, Pinegrove gives us a couple of options for being able to make non-breaking edits in components. So going back to our menu for an example, on each page, we will want the correct menu link to be highlighted by adding a class of active and then also removing that same class from the whole home link where it was originally active. To accomplish this, we need to make our individual menu items editable. This can be accomplished in a few ways. First, we could uncheck the box next to the left of update instances when defining our original component right here. This will allow editing of this component on any page it was added to. Occasionally this functionality is needed, but it largely obviates the advantages of using components. Another way is to disable updating of components on selected pages. So for example, if we go to the products page, make sure our component is selected. We could then click on don't update from the actions panel. This means that when we update all of the rest of the components in the file, this one won't. However, Pinegrow also makes available a number of additional actions to be used with components. One of the major ones is editable. Going back to the definition, we can see down under all actions, under editable areas, there's a selection for editable. This allows you to designate certain areas as modifiable in the child components. Note, there's also a repeat and optional actions that we won't cover in this tutorial. Okay, so what do we actually want to make editable? Again, for our menu, each of the active links should get a new class. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and select each of those navbar items. I'm going to collapse this down and then use click and shift to select all four of those menu links. Now with those selected, I'm going to click on editable. From the define editable area, we need to give a unique ID. Again, just like before, adding a prefix is a good idea. We're going to use CT. And then since, this here, since these are different menu items, we'll use that. Now from here, I want to click off inner content. Leaving this on would mean that we could edit the individual menu items within each dropdown, for example, changing the icons. And right now, I think we want to keep those all unified across our pages. We have three additional basic choices and one advanced choice that we can make from this define editable area settings. Our focus here is to make the classes attribute of the element editable, but we will also look at the other options available to us. First, if we wanted to change an attribute other than class on this item, we could add the attribute name into the input box next to attributes. So we can add multiple attributes like, for example, ID or data color. And all we need to do is add the uh, name of the attribute, hit return, and then add the next. So again, this is an artificial example. Um, we're not actually wanting to change those, uh, but I think it's useful to show an example where we do. 
Next, if we wanted to be able to add or remove a class, which is the case in our example, we would type the class name we wanted to change into the input box. So in this case, we want to change the class or toggle the class active. But again, we could add multiple classes just like with attributes by entering each name followed by a return or a comma. Finally, we can elect to be able to change the background image by clicking on the back image checkbox. The final field in this setting area is the components input box here. This allows us to create nested components where the components inside the outer container are limited to only those we select. You can read more about this in the documentation. Now let's see what impact our choices have made when we go to the edit our component on the other pages. First, we need to click the orange arrows to update. And now we can select one of our other pages and then go ahead and select, for example, the home link. Now under our properties panel, we can see that there's a new section editable properties. So if you remember, just as an example, although this isn't something we want to change, uh, I added in two additional attributes to be potentially edited uh, for this component, the ID and the data color. So we could then put the names that we want to assign to the ID or the name that we want to assign to the data color into these boxes. We could also, if we uh, elected to, um, add a background image by clicking on the folder and navigating to where that asset is. But the main thing that we want to do is we want to remove the active class from this home and add it to this product link. To do that, all we do is pull this menu down and select the blank space. That class has now been removed as we see up here in our classes. We can now navigate to the next link over, which is the products link and corresponds to the page that we're on. Pull this down and select active. And now you can see that it has the red active link styling added to it. We can go ahead and do the same thing uh, for our other uh, pages. Right now, we don't have enough time in this tutorial to cover one of the other advantages of components that I listed above. Unlike HTML snippets, you can bring components into multiple projects along with supporting JavaScript, images, and style sheets. And I'll go ahead and cover this in another tutorial. Additionally, one thing that I didn't list is that you can use components to convert existing content to match your uh, components that you've defined. This is very useful when converting an existing page to a new design. I hope this tutorial will help you get the most out of the Pine Grow web editor. As always, feel free to reach out to us either by email or through the forum. Have fun designing with Pine Grow.